All right, so as we go over these, um, make corrections on your page and use this to study with along with the review that we did yesterday. All right, so we're going to choose all of these names that are valid names for plane K. In order to name a plane, you can either use one capital letter, not representing a point, just this the plane. So plane K is one way to name that plane. Another way is to use three non-collinear points. So when we're checking to see, we need to meet, see if those three points are in the plane and are they non-collinear. If they're on the same line, then that, that's ruled out. There can be infinitely many planes that go through that single, single line. And so when we look at ADC, they are collinear, so this is not a valid name. Again, it's because they're collinear. JDB, those are collinear. ADF, those are not collinear. So those are, and they're all three in the in that plane, so that's one valid way. JDC, not collinear, so that would be another valid way. CDA, those are collinear, not a valid way. DGF, non-collinear, so those are also, that is another valid way to name that plane. So plane K along with plane ADF, plane JDC, and plane DGF all refer to that specific plane. So they must be non-collinear points. Um, which A, C, and F are all non-collinear points. Those, those three choices, I should say. Which is not a valid way to refer to line DC. So line DC is right here. Line M, that's a valid way. Line AC, that's two points on that line, so that would be a valid way. Line ADC, you never use three points to refer to a line, so that is not a valid way. And then line AD, be this point and this point, those are on that line, it's using two points. So choice C is the only one that does not uh, refer to line DC in a valid way. You cannot use three points to name a line. Find the distance. You can count on the number line, one, two, three, four, five. You could do one minus a negative four, which is one plus four, that's five. Or you could do negative four minus one, just make sure you take the absolute value of that. So whichever way you work it, you should get five for that distance. Here, if you're counting, you've got one and then 0.5, so 1.5. If you're doing your calculations, 0.5 minus a negative 1 is 0.5 plus 1, that's 1.5. You can also do negative 1 minus 0.5, just make sure your answer is coming out to be positive. Use that absolute value. Number 5, PR is 17. 0.5 RS is 14.7, so the total will be the sum of those, so 17.5 plus 14.7. If you're adding by hand, line up your decimal point and make sure you're carrying. You can use a calculator if you like. 32.2, make sure you put your units, millimeters. You'll lose a point if you don't put your, your units on the test. Which of these is not correct based on the diagram? So A, B, so the distance from A to B is equal to the distance from B to C, that's correct. Angle A equals angle B, that is not a correct statement. We can say angle A is congruent to angle B, 
or sorry, angle should be angle C. So there's a couple reasons why that one's not correct. Um, angles can be congruent. Their measures can be equal. So we could also say measure of angle A is is uh, equal to the measure of angle C. That would also be a correct statement. All right, AD congruent to CD. That's a correct statement. BC congruent to BA. That is. Uh, this one should is also not correct. Let me circle the ones that are our answer here. So this is not correct because you're using the wrong angles and angles are congruent or their measures are equal. This one is not correct because it should say congruent. Either BC equals BA or you could say segment BC is congruent to segment BA. So segments can be congruent. Their measures are equal. The distances are equal. On a number line, if J has a coordinate of negative 4, so just think of number line, negative 4, uh, what are all the possible coordinates of K given that JK is 9? So 9 units to the right, we would add 9, and we would be at 5. 9 units to the left, we would be subtracting 9, and we would be at negative 13. So k could be, so k is negative 13 or 5. Either way, since j is here, whether k is over here at 5 or if k is at the negative 13, either way, those distances are 9. We have an expression for fh, or 32, a number for fh, 32. We have an expression for fg of 5x, and gh is 3x. So we can say 5x plus 3x equals 32. That's the segment addition postulate that allows you to add segments together. Combine those like terms, 5x plus 3x is 8x, and then divide both sides by 8, and so x is equal to 4. So that's part A. Part B, find gh. gh is 3x, so now we know x is 4, so replace the x with 4 and multiply, and so gh is 32. Or I should say 12. FH was 32. GH is 3 times 4, 12. If you wanted to, you could find FG, that's 5 times 4, 20. All right, we're told that BC is 4.7 and CA is 11. So we can do 11 minus 4.7. If you're using, if you're not using a calculator, you'll want to uh, add on a zero tenths there. Zero minus seven, we'd have to borrow. Ten minus seven is three. Ten minus four is six. So six point three is the distance from A to B. All right, label your points x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. We'll substitute into the distance formula. So we're finding the distance from u to v. So uv is equal to substituting in x sub 2, that's 1. Minus is from the formula, y sub 1 is negative 3. y sub 2 is negative 2, minus y sub 1, which is 5. Subtract, or uh, 1 minus a negative 3, that becomes 1 plus 3, that's 4. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. If we square those, 4 squared is 16, 
negative 7 in parentheses squared, negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. Add those together and we get 65. So we have the square root of 65. If you try to do a factor tree on 65, you might come up with like 5 times 13. Both of those are prime, so this is as far as we can go with it. So you, the exact value for UV is 65. And then we'll go to our calculator for a decimal approximation. So square root of 65 could be 8.1 approximately. So we found both the approximate value and the exact value. Since it's already set up in the coordinate grid, if you want to do the Pythagorean theorem, you can. So this distance would be 3, this one's 1. Um, we don't know the hypotenuse. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. It doesn't matter which one you choose for a or b. 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, and so c squared equals 10. Square root both sides. Only a positive answer makes sense, so square root of 10 is the exact value here. Um, I'll go ahead and show it using the distance formula as well. So if we label our points x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, plug it into the distance formula, um, we can use tw for that distance. So tw is equal to the difference in the x's. So 5 minus 2 squared plus the difference in the y's, 4 minus 3 squared. So we'll have 3 squared plus 1 squared. And so that's 9 plus 1, 10. So we get the square root of 10 for the exact value, and then we'll go to our calculator for that decimal approximation. So we get about 3.2. For TW. So the exact value is square root 10, approximate value is about 3.2. Should say ABD is a right angle. So here's your right angle. Right angles measure 90 degrees. And then we're told that CBA is 49 degrees. And we're looking for this other angle over here. So we can say that x plus 49 has to equal 90. Solve that. And some of you may have just done 90 minus 49 instead of writing it out as an equation. Either way, you should get for the measure of angle ABC. I'm going to change that to the measure of angle DBC. That one's the 41 degrees. All right, midpoint between the two points. You can use the midpoint formula. Average of your x's, average of your y's. And some of you can do that without using the formula itself. All right, so label your points x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. So we'll have x sub 1, negative 3, plus x sub 2, which is 1. And then y sub 1 plus y sub 2, which is negative 6. Add those together, you get negative 2 over 2. And then 2 plus negative 6 is negative 4 over 2. We'll divide that, and we'll get negative 1, negative 2. So that's the midpoint. This time we're not given the um, coordinates, but we can look at the graph and tell 
F is at 2, 0. G is at negative 2, 1. So let one of those be your first point, the other be your second point. Does not matter which is which. Your work will look slightly different, but average your x or sorry, yeah, average your x's, average your y's. So we'll have two plus negative two divided by two, and then average of the y's zero plus one divided by two. So we get zero divided by two and one divided by two. 0 divided by 2 is 0, so the point will be at 0, 1 half. And if you look at your grid, it does make sense for that to be our midpoint. Midpoint between negative 3 and 2, you can average your two coordinates. And so we get negative 1 half. Or you could say negative 0.5. If you're looking at the grid, you're counting in one from each at a time. And then we have a half and a half. So negative one half. Or you could say negative 0.5. All right, last one. We have the midpoint this time. We have one of our endpoints. So one way to think through this is to go from the endpoint of 2 to negative 3, we travel to the left 5. If we travel to the left 5 more, negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. For the y-coordinates, we can think, okay, we're starting at negative 4. We're going, to the, we're going up. If we're going to, to negative 1, we went up 3. If we go up 3 more, Negative 1 plus 3, that's 2. So that's one way of thinking through it. The other way would be to use the formula. So midpoint is equal to the average of the x's, average of the y's. On this particular one, we have one of our x coordinate, y coordinates, or uh, one of our points, endpoints. And we have the midpoint. So on the left side of the equation, we can write negative 3, negative 1. That's our midpoint. And then we can fill in for x sub 1, we can put 2. And fill in for y sub 1 and put negative 4. So the x coordinate negative 3 must be equal to this. So we'll have an equation negative 3 equals. 2 plus x sub 2 all over 2. So that'll be one of our equations we'll write, and then the y coordinate must be equal to this. So we can say negative 1 equals negative 4 plus y sub 2 over 2. To get rid of um, division by 2 on this right side, we'll multiply by 2, the inverse operation. And so we'll multiply by 2 on the left side, we'll get negative 6 equals 2 plus x sub 2. These twos divide out, they cancel. To get rid of plus 2, we'll subtract 2. And so our x coordinate, x sub 2, x coordinate of the endpoint is negative 8. We can do the same type of thing on the um, the y's. To get rid of division by 2, multiply by 2, that's the inverse operation. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. On the right side, the 2's divide out. They cancel. And so we're just left with that numerator. Negative 4 plus y sub 2. To get rid of that negative 4, we'll add 4 to each side. You could say subtract a negative 4 as well. Um, and so we get 2 equals y sub 2. So that confirms our other endpoint is the point negative 8, 2. So hopefully that made sense. You can look back at the review from yesterday as well as the review from today as you prepare for tomorrow's test. Have a great day.